come out from all over, from what I understand, and just come see the show. So whenever they come in and see it, we want them to leave with an impression uh, of go run and tell somebody else to come down and take a show and tell somebody and bring a few friends with you. I chose the ones that I like recently because like anything, the latest one is my favorite. And I started with the male and female with a hat and I like the way they came out. I like the variations in the colors, and I like the strength of the couple because when two together got a thing going on, they got a thing going on. Well, it's about uh, visions from the past and the present, to the present. Um, and I wanted the artists to have the freedom to go and either pull some of their old pieces or if they wanted to paint on what's the present, no matter what, so that they would have something that would um, use of their own uh, creativity. The poem inspired the painting. So um, it just kind of says that my hair and my spirit cannot be controlled. You know, you, 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 it might fool you for a little while, but it, before long it's up and fighting again, and you got to learn to try to control it, but it's really not controllable, you, you know. I use money a lot to kind of uh, start the conversation going because a lot of times, you know, people are really afraid to talk about art or, you know, approach the artist. So I kind of bring something to the table and saying, we all deal with money. So let's, let's start the conversation there. And then you might learn about me, how we relate, how we kind of connect. My husband uh, gave me a pad of paper and I didn't really know what to do with it. So I was actually going to use it for practice and I actually, like the face that I created and I wanted something bigger so um, I just decided I was going to do a collage and so I started adding more and more squares to it. I used, I call them rivets, but I used these little uh, metal nails to give it a finished frame. The majority of the artists have been on this show before and we always try to find somebody out there and bring them in and uh, our new one is Terry. And um, she's, uh, I think she's gonna do very well. The title is A Little Girl's Sacrifice. And I think about when I was a kid and our natural hair, we would go to the salon, maybe to get ready for a special event, whether it be church, Sunday school, or Easter, or what have you. And we would have to go and, and get our hair done. And it was kind of painful, it was a sacrifice. And so this is done in watercolor. So one, one of my watercolor uh, works of art and it just reminds me of when I was a kid. Well, I like for young people to look at, to, to be inspired by looking at my artwork, uh, be inspired about the history, the black history of Durham. And they can see that they, they can achieve things also. They can make history. I want them to see these as black heroes, as superheroes out of Durham. The piece I have, uh, that I'm presenting for the show is untitled. It's a uh, Buffalo Soldier piece, and the Buffalo Soldier that's uh, sitting on the horse with the cross on it is uh, Dr. M.T. Pope. And there's a museum downtown Raleigh that um, houses uh, Dr. Pope's uh, belongings and, and things, a house that he actually owned in Raleigh. This is called Ancestral, Ancestral Stories Earth, and it is part of the series, as I said, that explores uh, different elements. So I have earth, I have ocean, I have desert, and so on. Um, this one uh, features a lot of natural elements, so that's an actual river stone. There's raffia, there's also metallic threads and actual twigs that I've painted, uh, as well as a handcrafted um, clay piece. Well, the reason I chose these two pieces for the exhibition, they're part of a recent series I, I created called my four month series, about a four month period in my life. So you see this kind of a landscape inspired uh, abstract piece and the, each of the squares rep represent a four month period in my life. So now it's pr pr basically these elements in time and space. Everything I do in the last two years has been just really colorful. I don't even know what I, how I would even go about doing just black and white like I was doing before with charcoal. Um, I just use, a, I, I love using a lot of color. The more color, the better. 
and the more I make, I realize that they're all telling their own story. So as a storyteller, of course, you know, as I'm talking to them as they're coming into existence, there's a story behind it. And now I'm laughing at myself because how am I going to write all these stories? Or will I just make one story and let it be everybody's story? Wow. That's the reaction I look for. I want, I want to touch the inner part. Um, I want to touch something inside of them that um, um, maybe other artists don't touch. I want to get to the core. I, I like the essence. And, um, and I'm reaching for that. My father passed in 2011, and he probably was one of my greatest, biggest fans for art. And he would always, if he was here today, he probably would say, you didn't sign your name big enough. <laughs> so, you know, just kudos to him that um, he was one, that, as I grew up, he would always inspire me and encourage me to keep doing your artwork. I try to push people's um, creativity and showing them that the things that we use every day can be used in, in artworks. It doesn't have to be just canvas or paint. I think you have to be passionate to be a great artist. I think anybody can hone certain skills and everybody has natural uh, talents that they can hone and direct. The matter is do you have the passion and the discipline to hone those abilities? Can everybody play for the NBA? No, but can anybody play sports? Yes, the question is your level of capacity and and capability. So I would say anybody and everybody can make art. The reaction I hope to get is that they will walk away with a, a, a total new love for art all over again.